they often say about people from Hamilton, they, they, they're on a sliding squ- scale of people with quirky senses of humor to people who have an incredible work ethic. I, I know where I fit on the sliding scale of Hamilton, and I'm pretty sure you fit on the, on the work ethic uh, side a little heavier. Where do you get that incredible work ethic that you bring in games? Yeah, honestly, I'm not too sure. It's just, uh, it's something I've had my my whole life. I'm just, uh, I'm really competitive. Um, I feel like if someone's doing something or doing extra work and I'm not doing it, I feel like I'm missing out. So it's just something I've always kind of had ingrained in my mind that, um, you know, if I'm, if I'm doing less than someone beside me, I'm just not happy with it. So it's just something that I've always had as a mindset and uh, it stayed with me into adulthood. So I just... It's just kind of something I grew up with, and I can't really pinpoint why I've always been like that, but it's just uh, just how I was, I guess. I remember clearly that when you'd say, oh, it's going to be a personal development situation, there'd be a few, oh, no, <laughs> somewhere in the background. But that's not the case anymore. There's almost uh, you know a little bit more energy and enthusiasm around those days when you get to work on your personal game. How do you, you know, frame those development days, and, and what do they mean to you? I can't say I wasn't guilty of that before uh, when I was younger. I feel like the the idea of development days was just like a purely like no puck touching kind of day and that's definitely expanded now to being more specific to what guys need and you know if guys need to learn how to like fix their skating then you know so be it but a lot of development doesn't necessarily mean skating you know I mean there's a lot of great skaters so it can be you know stick handling it could be any type of puck touch or just uh, in-game structure stuff. So yeah, the development part of the, the game, especially with the, the Leafs organization, they really put a lot of uh, attention to that. They have a lot of staff that deal with different aspects of development. So for me, I, I personally really like um, focusing on things that are my weaknesses in hockey. I feel like uh, a lot of guys do like doing that as well. Because um, I mean, it never hurts to obviously make your weaknesses your strengths. So I mean, I love just working on stuff like that and just getting the repetitions in. Can that look like he stepped on? I had to count the match. Ackman over the shoulder! Oh my God, What a goal! Greg Moore talked about visualization and about you using visualization uh, earlier this season. And I'm just curious about how you work with uh, visualization to make yourself a you know a better hockey player and, and find some ways to uh, create some offense this year. A couple of years ago, I started trying to uh, look more at the mental aspect of the game. I mean, you're always so tuned to try to improve your body and whatnot, and it's it's easy to avoid the mental aspect of it. So, just with visualization, it's just something I do. I don't do too long of it, but it's just, you know, you you visualize situations that can come up and you kind of can repeat it in your head. And it kind of just helps you get in the right mindset that when that certain opportunity happens, if it's something that happens to you a lot, it kind of, uh, in the moment, your instincts can kick in and it's already kind of, you've already been thinking about it, that your instincts kick in in the way that you want to react to it. So it's just kind of, uh, it's kind of pre-preparing yourself for something you know could potentially happen and and just you know being ready for that